So the events of the Egyptian Revolution is carrying on. Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. Assalamu alaikum. Malaikum salam. Friday of cleaning. This is uh, when they removed the, pu the public prosecutor since the public prosecutor was not investigating the former corrupt officials like he was supposed to. So there are people who knew exactly what the political power structure of Egypt was. And they were able to tell um, when they weren't doing their job and they were able to use the, the mass demonstrations as, um, as a, a tool for leverage in order to get what they want. And that's the thing I think is people won't get out on the streets in Louisville unless they actually know that their efforts will go towards a meaningful change. They've got to know what it is that uh, the revolution's about. What is the agenda? What's the precise demands? What do you all want? What do we want? What do the 99% want? What does specifically Occupy Louisville? What do we want? We want something very different than, um, we want something very similar to Occupy Wall Street, but we want something also very different. We want the Occupy with the Louisville flavor. So Occupy has to have a Louisville flavor, and we need to, uh, we need to point fingers and name names and um, find addresses and make phone calls and have a massive list of pressure and points where we can get people out. The street demonstrations is a good way. Having a mailing list and people who are willing to call from mailing list and pressure the right politicians. 23 to 0, 23 city council people is enough. 26 council people is the total amount of council people in Louisville, and that's enough people to be able to manipulate. You should be able to get uh, an organization to where they can pressure 26 people, not manipulate so much as inform. They can get the information in their hands. They can tell the city council people, here's what we stand for, and here's what our voters want you to vote for. You don't have to do it. We're not forcing your hand, but you're not going to get the votes, and we'll remember that you stand in against us. We remember when Louisville City Council stand against the war on workers. We remember the Republicans who stood up against the war, the workers, trying to stop the unions, trying to have some sort of bullshit, um, um, uh, Wisconsin, fucking Scott, whatever, dickhead, fucking Scott over in Wisconsin. They're trying to say that that was going to be our Tahir Square moment. We're going to have a Tahir Square moment in Wisconsin. Uh, people got out in Wisconsin, but Wisconsin was able to encourage everybody, not like Occupy New York had, not like Occupy Wall Street had done. May 27th of 2011, two months after the revolution, January, February, March, April, May, four months after the revolution, the second Friday of anger, a.k.a. the second revolution of anger, or the second revolution. So Egypt had to have several revolutions in 2011. It wasn't just the January 25th revolution. It was all over. It was continuing. It had to carry on. And they had to have renewed calls for justice and to make sure that the military council who took over were doing as they said that they were doing. Sure, you're giving us law and order, but are you giving us the democracy? Are we going to see these elections? And when you give us the, the right elections, will you tell us that Morsi won? Um, or we tell us that the other guy won just because you're a bunch of corrupt bastards and you've been corrupt the whole fucking time. So the second Friday of anger. But the scap is very much like America. We're a militarized society. So i uh, definitely seeing different branches of military wanting to get um, their hands on it. And I think that's why, you know, I, I don't want to say, I, wanna, I don't want to say divide and conquer, but yeah, you got to divide and conquer the military. You got to get the National Guard or the police on your side. You've got to get somebody on your side because you got to be able to maintain law and order or you got to have security detail yourself. So private security guards, Blackwater officials, um, or those guys in the library at U of L. Get those guys, you know, since uh, that's what U of L's paying for. They're paying for them to be security guards, right? So they're private security detail, and they're really allowed to shoot people. That constable in Louisville, we can get the constables on our side. The constables might not know it, but the guy who did shoot that uh, criminal for for it was a petty bullshit. So he's wrong on that, but he was right that he is a cop and he's allowed to have those powers of arrest. So he's right. He has the powers of arrest and he's allowed to do that. The constables in Kentucky Constitution still has power. The constables in Kentucky's Constitution still has power. I need to figure out Louisville's laws a little bit better about the Constitution because it all comes from the 1891 Constitution of William Justice Goble, the first New Dealer in America, the first New Dealer German Kentuckian. The German Kentuckian who comes from a long list of rabble rousing and standing up and speaking truth to power. 
German Kentuckians. They were the ones who were for the Union and for Lincoln fighting against the, the Wasp, the Puritan Confederates. And it was the Wasp who were attacking the Germans when we got here. So, Germans, we understand hardship. We understand struggle. The second Friday of anger, May 27, 2011, the second revolution. Tens of thousands of demonstrators filled Tahir Square and Egypt's capital, Cairo, besides uh, perhaps demonstrators in each of Alexandria, Suez, Ismailia, Garbia, and other areas in the largest demonstration since ousting Mubarak's regimes. Protesters demanded no military trials for civilians. The Egyptian constitution to be made before the parliament elections and for the old regime gang and those who killed protesters in January and February to be put on fair trial. The Friday of retribution, tens of thousands of protesters gathered in Suez, Alexandria, Tahir Square, and Cairo to voice frustration with the ruling Supreme Council of the Armed Forces for what they called the slow pace of change five months after the revolution. Some also feared that the military is to rule Egypt indefinitely. July 8, 2011, the Friday of determination. Hundreds of thousands of protesters gathered in Suez, Alexandria, and Tahir Square in, in Cairo. So it wasn't just Cairo, it wasn't just Tahir Square. All the cities in Egypt were standing up. The major cities, the important cities, the cities that have people that understand and care about what's going on. So, in short, these are my ideas for a day of rage and some other thoughts that I had with Occupy Louisville movement, movement specifically. A day of rage never happened. Um, we were not able to get any electoral change or we didn't show that we had any power. And that's why the actor Curtis Morrison lost his primary. That took away the most power that we had. So now we have, we're in a vacuum. And Mayor Fisher knows he can just keep fucking with us and fucking with us and pushing us back. Just like they started from day fucking one. People want to say, oh, you got to work with the, the protesters and you got to work with the um, demonstrators. Well, yeah, you can go ahead and work with the demonstrators and the protesters. You can go ahead and do that. Um, but I don't believe you. I saw what you did from the very beginning when they was in the Belvedere. They worked out a permit and they were allowed to be there. They actually talked to your fucking dumb asses and they did what the fuck you wanted. And the reason why you all kept pushing back is because you knew that you could. You knew that you could. And so you kept doing it. You kept pushing back. You picked some representatives. You pushed them back. Pushed them to Jefferson and, 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 and Fifth Street. Then Ali and Fifth or wherever. I don't there's Jefferson Square and then there is Founder Square, right? So it went from Jefferson Square to Founder Square to not existing at all, uh, to, to the West End, right? But we still here. We still surviving. That's one thing 99%ers know how to do. We know how to survive. We ain't going nowhere. So revolt, Louisville, revolt. This is some uh, ideas about how I was thinking how... Well, we didn't get our day of rage in 2011, but we got 2012 to get a day of rage. And we got 2013 to get a day of rage. We got 2014 and 15. We got the rest of our lives to have a day of rage. The revolution will probably just happen from underneath us, and we won't be able to stop it. But the question will be is, if it happens, what will you do? To uh, uh, Will you enhance it? Will you talk good about it? Will you champion it? Or will you denounce it? Will you be out in the streets with the revolution? Or will you be fighting the revolution? Will you be sleeping during the revolution? That's one of the greatest tragedies, according to Malcolm, or Martinette, uh, Mountain, Jesus. Um, one of those, right? According to Martin Luther King Jr., it's a tragedy to be asleep during the revolutions. So, um, those are some broad strokes. Uh, du Bois electoral uh, strategy, promoting the good candidates. If we don't have good candidates, getting good candidates, massive street demonstrations. So there's lots of ideas here, lots of good ideas that I probably will write down and work on and try to make them better and more uh, precise. These are the broad strokes. These are the broad strokes in the beginning. And like I said, I tried to show this to several people. Um, uh, but like, I guess they, I don't know. Uh, one of the people that I showed it to said that if I did get arrested, uh, putting up a tent at U of L, that nobody would give a shit about my dumb ass since we live in a dog eat dog cold ass fucking society, and he's right. He was right. Nobody would give a shit. So um, we need to develop the social circles. I think there's a lot of things here. So I began with the broad strokes. The 1960s failed, and then this current global revolution is comparable to the color revolutions in Eastern Europe. Springtime of nations. Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto came in 1848, and in 1848 there were 50 revolutions. So I, I want to say it's Karl Marx's revolutions. Oh, uh, when 
Europe stood up once in their life in unison like they're doing now in the decolonization of Africa. That's when during the 60s and 70s all of Africa got rid of the white oppressors. They stood in solidarity. Um, Malcolm X talked about the Beidong Conference in 1954 where African nations and Asian nations got together and they started realizing how the West was oppressing them. And they started to understand the world a little bit better terms by it being allied with each other. So, um, so I made comparisons about what this Occupy movement is about. I think those are the three main, the springtime of nations, decolonization of Africa, and the color revolutions. And again, the springtime of nations, this is America's spring. This is, uh, you know, our color revolutions, our rainbow rebellion. This is our rainbow rebellion, the rainbow revolution. It needs to be, I think it should be the rainbow revolution. Gay marriage has uh, taken front and center in the presidential debate right now, especially with the whole Chick-fil-A thing and good for business for Chick-fil-A, right? Because everybody's talking about Chick-fil-A now. That just gets you thinking about Chick-fil-A. And I just said it like three times. I should say KFC every time I say Chick-fil-A, but they're, they're all corporations, so maybe we should just have our own chicken coops. Or maybe we should try to figure out how to not eat meat whatsoever. So, um, Springtime of Nations failed. I believe Marx inspired, inspired this. So, Springtime of Nations failed because there's no permanent structural changes in uh, society in terms of real change. Springtime of Nations woke lots of folks up and eventually turned that into something. But in 1848, the revolutions in 15 different countries had failed because the counter-revolutionary forces had gained the confidence and then they crushed everybody into submission. So as long as Mayor Fisher thinks that he can crush us into submission, it's not just a camping ban, it's symbolic of against the Occupy movement. You're a dick, Mayor Fisher. You want to stand against Occupy? Fuck you. Make sure You better make sure that the homeless people are taken care of. That'd be the last thing that I'll do here in Louisville. If it, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> um, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that the homeless problem here in Louisville is fixed. We can do this. We can fix the homeless problem. If you want to eat in Cincinnati, they got the free store. We need a free store in Louisville. Let's get a free store. There's there's a, a very tangible, concrete goal. A free store that gives food out to people that don't have food stamps and that just walk through the door saying, we need to eat. Yes, we will give you food. You want something to drink too? We'll have running water there and maybe a water fountain and some restrooms and information about where they can stay. Yes, yes, we can do this. We can make our homeless shelters better. We can cure homelessness. That's, you want to say that you're for the people? You're led us to administrate and shit, just not camp overnight? Yeah, right. We'll see if what you're saying is true. I don't think what you're saying is real. I don't think you're being honest. I think you're taking Occupy and you're making them your enemy. You're trying to make Occupy your bitch. And I think it's a bad idea for you politically and especially historically. Do you care about how history looks at you? Like I said in the beginning, it was like, oh shit, they think that Occupy is just going to peter out themselves so they're not actually attacking us in the tents. And I thought that was a good thing. And, you know, that actually has a, that had something to do with some of the stuff. There was no big ransacking of, uh, of Occupy. I, actually, I don't know about that. Founder Square, I'm not sure how it, they stepped down. They voluntarily stepped down. So the police actually did not come in to Occupy. We voluntarily stepped down. So that's what we get when we work with the system. You can't work with the system. You can't work with the people in the system. Another mistake the Springtime Nations had, the, another mistake that Occupy Louisville had, something that I felt is that the working class values were not we're not beholden. I know it's hard uh, when you've been working class for a long time to figure out how to figure out to, you know, organize yourselves to where everybody can get their viewpoints in without bogging down the conversation to trivial matters. Uh, but we got to figure it out. We've got to go through the process and we've got to be able to, you know, the, that the idea of democracy. We set an example of democracy and that example will take uh, the entire system down. People will see how we treat each other and they'll learn from us. They'll learn by our example. So the uh, springtime of nations occupied, the intellectuals could not connect with the proletariat. The intellectuals were talking about all these intellectual fucking bullshit theories. We all work in people. We all on the bottom. We all 99%. That's a common goal. That's something that can unify us all. And that's why we got to embrace it. Embrace the economics of this argument. The economics, the economics moves history. It's all about the money anyways. It's always been about the money. Uh, you think you're free? Go somewhere without money. And then tell me you're free. You ain't got freedom if you don't have money. 
So by using these examples as guides to the current world of wellness, I believe we can shape this movement into something that really makes a great difference. Um, so hopefully we can we can change the world. Uh, school is the advertising agency which makes you believe that you need the society as it is. So education, it's all fucked. The whole system from the top down, from the bottom up, it's all fucked. That's why we need to have revolution. We need to get free, Louisville. Let's get some freedom and democracy. We're fighting all these wars for freedom and democracy. Let's get some freedom and democracy right here in our own town.